Hey everyone, this is Notzer, and today we're debuting a new series, How to Play. Uh, it's going to showcase how to play a specific ship with the equipment, the commander skill, and then a showcase of a match with a bunch of different scenarios and hopefully a victory at the end. Uh, now let's talk about the Des Moines. Of course it was going to be the Des Moines. This is my favorite ship in the game right now. It's the one that dominates pretty much every game. And uh, hey, I have a really great game that I want to show you. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. Uh, as we look at the armor, we will notice that it has 27 millimeter bow and stern. That means that 380 cannot overmatch with AP. Midship, we have 30 millimeter deck, 30 millimeter armor belt, and then 152 citadel. Uh, the 30 millimeter on the upper part of the ship gives it a little bit more play with regard to active maneuvering. Uh, if you angle just right, you can cause a ricochet. The higher the armor, obviously, the more chance of a ricochet. So it's really nice uh, and very useful for that. I play the Des Moines along the lines of dodging. Uh, but one thing that isn't nice about the Des Moines, that Citadel is way above the waterline and it's on the outside of the ship. So you can be punished very easily. Um, just gotta be careful. That's all you have to be, right? Easy. As far as equipment is concerned, pretty much standard main armament mod one for the protection of the guns, uh, extended duration radar. Des Moines is the quintessential ship for this upgrade. So definitely would choose it over anything else. Uh, if you're not using radar, I would probably go uh, probably engine room just to make sure you don't get completely knocked out and dead in the water. Uh, slot 3, this is different from others. I go main battery mod 2, the other skill that could potentially equip aiming system. It's really a question of do you want better dispersion or do you want faster turret traverse? To me, faster turret traverse allows for better potential damage and also better damage per minute. So it's kind of like a concealment stat line for me. And because they took away the penalty, it feels like it's a more uh, lucrative reward than that of the aiming. Unfortunately, the aiming is split between a lot of different stats. And I think that hurts it in this direct comparison. Uh, slot four, propulsion. You could go steering if you don't have legendary, but I would go propulsion. Uh, we have uh, obviously concealment. Whoop. Concealment, there's really not another valid skill Concealment goes really well with Radar. And then the Legendary. Now, if I did not have the Legendary, I would go Main Battery Mod 3. I don't need the range. I have everything I need right here. Uh, but because I have the Legendary or the Unique Upgrade, my Rudder Shift is much better and my Acceleration. So Stop Starting and Open Water is really both accelerated into the stratosphere, as far as I'm concerned, in power. I really love this module. Uh, and then Commander, Defensive AA versus Hydro. I mean, Defensive is not that good because it requires that, you know, the aircraft fly over you and you use it right and they do the right thing and normally you can't even kill the squad before it attacks you. So it's disappointing. I go Hydro, Torpedoes, it lets me stay aggressive and push into them with radar. And uh, Spotting Aircrafts, Fighter, I don't really care about those because radar is radar. As far as the Commander is concerned... Uh, we go Priority Target, Expert Marksman, Superintendent, Concealment, Demolition Expert, Adrenaline Rush, Jack of All Trades, Expert Loader, and Preventative Maintenance. Uh, and I sort of go in that order because that's the order I find the most important. You can choose to skip over and maybe pick up Expert earlier or Preventative or Jack. But this build is really well balanced. Uh, ex Expert Loader allows me to basically cheat players who try and cheat me. If they see me firing HE and they suspect it, I can quickly switch over to AP or the first initial ambush and use AP. You want to use a lot of AP in your Des Moines. All right, let's take this baby out and see how she goes. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for your cash, either with a cash strap or, as shown here, a money clip option. 
I personally prefer the money clip. It works really well. And as you can see, I can sort of hold the money clip and eject the necessary cards when I'm at a store or something like that. There are over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. If it wasn't enough to win you over, check out the 30,000, yes, 30,000 five-star reviews. I have used this for over 40 days, and I can attest it lives up to it. It is incredibly compact compared to the competition from yesteryear. It has so much going for it with RFID blocking. The, the material is very durable. It's long-lasting. It comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for your life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll allow you to test drive it for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. And get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash notzer and use the code notzer. Check out the link in the video description. All right, so the Des Moines. This is a domination mode. If it's epicenter, the same sort of strategy applies. If it's a standard battle, you just stay back and relax like everyone else and let things come to you. And there might be a play, but you don't normally plan to make a play early on. Whereas on Domination or Epicenter, as the Des Moines, you should absolutely be looking to take the objective or at the very least contest it because you have radar for that. And you have the shell arc to easily lob shells over islands and uh, hopefully with your overwhelming damage per minute, knock the target out. So we're approaching A point. I'm trying to use islands to block line of sight. And uh, as we approach, we are detected. Now, the only thing that that communicates is there is some ship that is within our detection, which is 10.9 kilometers. And it could be port or starboard. Now, I don't change my plan because I do have an island in the way. If the enemy wants to shoot at us, they have to shoot through an island. So... There's a good chance that just continuing forward and getting into a really held down position is probably the way to go if you are ever found out similarly like this one. So, of course, we're still Jotland. This is the uh, Tier 8 Pan-European DD. Uh, we're just going to go in on him. We did pop radar. The reason I popped radar is I just felt like the enemy DD was being too aggressive in his positioning. He communicated that he did not have any intent in contesting the objective. Uh, because he did that, that means he wants to get torpedo strikes. And yep, sure enough, we use hydro, and yep, sure enough, there's torpedoes trying to do damage to us. But we're able to back out safely. The Des Moines' unique upgrade makes this much easier than it would normally be. Coupling that with the acceleration module, you can stop start on a dime. That can force out players to miss with their main battery and it absolutely will force torpedoes to miss as well. So it's a good habit to pay attention and to use that acceleration to your advantage. Now, mm, this Cleveland looks like he wants to come out, and I'm a little antsy, but I want this Cleveland. And yep, the Kremlin can totally see you, and I'm like, oh, is he going to shoot at us? Did he shoot at someone else? He's going to shoot at you, so we got to do this quickly. And first salvo, good citadel. Second salvo, not so much. We aimed a bit too high on that one. We need to drop it down so the shell actually drops down. Kremlin does a good job of trading damage as I trade with the Cleveland, but we do get another Citadel, so that's good. And, of course, while this Kremlin is in this area, I have to be careful. I'm going to use this island to fire over and to block most of the shots. Uh, now, what is being communicated in this position? I'm spotted and yet there's really no source for the spot. So it must mean that the enemy DD who spotted me on port is probably the reason I'm spotted again. So he must have moved forward, but we don't have radar up, so I'm not trying to make a play without radar. And yep, we're, we're really trying to confirm exactly where this DD has gone. And yes, the priority target drops off the situational awareness that means that there's an island now blocking and he must be very close he's got to be within seven or eight kilometers so 10 seconds left on radar friendly vladivostok is going to take a torp uh, unfortunately i actually no 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 friendly vlad was able to save himself our radar comes up in two seconds and we know he's going to pop up right in front of us and yep 
there he is. There he is. Uh, I'm a little wide for the Kremlin. It's important that you guys look around. Yeah, you need to see the point of view of the enemy. It might look like it's a safe fire without any return possible. But then if you turn your camera, oh no, we're broadside. So yes, get back into cover while still being able to do damage. If there's a DD or any ship on the border, you really need to do two types of shots. And it's obviously easier in the Des Moines. But first shot, directly at them. And then the second shot, you should face, uh, you should choose to fire whether his momentum will carry him along the border or away from it. Uh, that way, there's not really a chance for him to have a, a dead zone of not taking damage. So, Didi's dead. That's a big pickup. But we needed to match because the enemy has already knocked out a cruiser and a Didi. So, we're basically normalized at this point, And I'm not liking that because I'm, too, I'm spending way too much time being bogged down trying to deal with this. And yes, I'm confirming the Akizuki is the reason why we're spotted while firing from behind the island. He's just barely in range of the gun bloom. So I wait on the gun bloom to come and uh, settle down. I'm hoping that the Akizuki will move in a position and we have found a nice little soft zone. Oh, just barely too far forward. It'll be easier for me to manage. Uh, is he gonna fire on me? Of course. The moment I saw his muzzle flash, I decided to push my accelerator to full and that was enough to throw off the shot. Coupling the propulsion module with the unique upgrade, you will probably end up getting a couple cheeky shots that are thrown off. And if you're trying to deal with someone, especially a Des Moines, that is using the unique upgrade, all you need to do is fire at his position and fire where he's going. Uh, so just do a sequential fire and you'll get some chip damage and that will force him to reconsider. Uh, now, as we're moving forward, the Cleveland wanted to show his side, so we're hoping that it'll over-rotate so I can punish, but he doesn't. He catches it just barely, and I'm I'm feeling pretty bad. You know, I got a Kremlin who clearly wants to kill us. Uh, thankfully, he's not targeting us right now, and that's by the priority target indicator. So I'm going to be as aggressive as I possibly can be. Uh, and the moment he switches, we know he wants to shoot us. So we're going to just try and throw off the shots a little bit. But using the battleship uh, in front of me, it's going to force him to have to resolve this problem. Because if he lets the Vladivostok just get on his broadside, he will basically citadel him and knock him out. So I'm just hoping that the Vladivostok will take his attention. And notice we're transitioning to the other side of his ship. And I'm hoping I don't have to kill him. I really hope that... Okay, someone else kill him. But it's a good habit when a player is engaged to force him to have to decide what side of a ship he will address. If everyone sails to the same side of an opponent's ship, then there's no crossfire. There's no punishment possible. And I was looking to give him, I was looking to give him a well done because he did play very well. He kept me alive. He pushed with me. We killed the Kremlin together. And now we actually have a chance in this game. Unfortunately, we are on the complete opposite end of this map. So we're going to spend a significant amount of this time just traveling to the other side in order to help our team. And, you know, there's few things that feel more helpless than a short-range ship who is nowhere near the action. Uh, so we just, have to, we just have to commit to going forward as fast as possible and making sure that we're paying attention to what's going on. And what's going on on the mini-map? is our team is contesting, trying to cap B. There is a couple enemy battleships that are trying to finish off a friendly North Carolina, and they absolutely will. They will overwhelm him. There's not enough help. If I could, I would absolutely already be there, firing on the enemy, trying to dissuade them from finishing off a teammate. It's a really good habit to get into, to identify opponents who are engaging your team actively especially someone who's low health or vulnerable or, you know, being hard countered, it's really important that you pay attention to that and you try and help your team. Uh, you'll find that more often than not, when a player is engaged with the opponent and their low health, you can freely fire without any cause of concern because the enemy is too focused on trying to get that kill. So we're finally in range. Enemy Puerto Rico is broadside. We got a Richelieu, we got a Buki. They are stacked up really close in that uh, little choke point around B. 
obviously we don't have torpedoes, so that's not something we can use, but that's a great opportunity to use torpedoes. Uh, AP's not working out, so I switched to HE. HE works just fine. Uh, obviously, be aggressive with AP, but HE is just fine, and we get a fire on the target. Good, good, good. Palmer, he is trying, attempting to hide around, and oh man, this is looking bad. This is looking really bad. Everyone on my team, save for immediately around me, is dead. I don't know that we can come back in this game. They're going to get B point as well. I only have two radar, and now I only have one. So we have to make this work, and we've got the North Carolina. Don't underestimate knowledge. You know, you might be like, oh, well, not sir. I don't know that I would do that. Well, we, get, we gathered knowledge, and we also have a chance to kill a DD. And as long as we have a chance to kill a DD with our radar, it's worth it. And, yep, sure enough, this Fletcher, he's getting so close. I am trying desperately to kill him before anyone on his team can answer. Cornering the map with islands is how you make yourself more powerful. And, oh, is this guy going to get out? He's got, like, nine seconds left. And we'll get one last good salvo as he's trying to duck in. And, oh, oh we've got a North Carolina broadside. AP all the way, baby. And... One thing that I want to stress, if you are not at point-blank range, you need to lift your shell just slightly because American AP has a tendency to drop. You want to drop in the Citadel, not in the water. It's not necessarily your best practice to locate your AP right at the waterline, especially if it's in this sort of intermediate range. You really want to watch where your shells are going and try and make sure that the momentum will carry it into the Citadel. But, you know, we got a Citadel damage shell kill. But we haven't killed him just yet. Is it enough? And boy, we are just trying to corner this so well. I'm just desperate to try and reduce damage taken. And we are able to just barely get that shell out. Uh, we do lose the friendly Vladivostok, unfortunately. I'm looking off my enemies on the east side. We are keeping it to where it's one versus one. Because I'm using the island to block most of the enemy... It's really me against the Pomeran. And I feel pretty good about that because my damage per minute is pretty high and the Pomeran only has 380mm. And because of 380mm, its AP cannot overmatch the 27 bow and stern. So he needs to locate his shells on my superstructure to be able to do any damage to me. And he does get a little bit of an overpin on the super, which is fine. And someone is shooting on me. Of course! It's a DDR! We don't have a radar, and I'm in a, a terrible position, so I have to go forward. Uh, basically go forward and duck into cover and hope that my teammates can eventually get into a position to punish that DD so that he can't keep me from doing what I need to do. Because we need to shoot our way out of this problem. And we've already done great work this game, but it just doesn't matter, you know. The east side fell so horribly. So successfully duck into cover. Check on the teammate, watch as he dies to torpedoes, or, yep, he dies to torpedoes, great. Fletcher, two DDs. Two DDs are alive, and I only have one radar. How are we going to solve this riddle? But our fire does give us high caliber. Uh, this enemy, Richelieu, does look to be trying to move forward. Don't try too hard to kill one target. Uh, you really want to kill targets that overextend. Because you don't want to put yourself in a position to trade too much health. And that's exactly what I'm looking to do. You see, I'm, I really am trying my hardest to kill that DD if I can. However, Friendly is able to finish him. And we have AP on the broadside battleship knock him out. We've done 205,000 damage. And it's still not enough. But we didn't have to use our radar. So, obviously, we have a ton of hydro. It's going to detect whatever's around this corner. And, oh, 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 oh. Friendly spotted him. I'm going to try and fire on him. Uh, I don't know if I want to use radar in this position. We did hold our fire. Now, I don't need to hold my fire as a heavy cruiser as he, when he's going into smoke. If I was a battleship and I fired, I would definitely be detected. But I'm a heavy cruiser. He's in smoke. It shouldn't have spotted him. And we're able to dodge that. The enemy is going to take a point. So 
The enemy can easily win this if they just go in together or run away. There's not a lot of time left. We have to overcome by not only capturing, but killing. And I'm hoping that, you know, in this position, I can contribute to capturing and potentially have my HE shells ready to go. And I wait until I'm detected. And sure enough, he's aggressive. He's looking to try and go at us. And, you know, worst possible position to be found out because he is just silver platter. And uh, another kill we don't get. Uh, but silver platter right there, an easy kill. And now we have the Pomeran and the Puerto Rico. Now they're both over here around this island. So we can continue this ring around the rosy if we want. Uh, loading AP, aiming at the top of the hull. That's absolutely where you want to go with the location. Don't try and go for a citadel. Just go for the most damage you can do, which is the top of the hull. And one, two, three. See you later, alligator. And then there was one. Just the Puerto Rico left. And, you know, our AP was about 6 to 8k broadside, which is great. And I throw out some AP shells, trying to get a little bit of chip damage. And, you know, we do pretty good, honestly. He returns with AP, and he has 305s, which cannot overmatch our bow. So as long as we stay positionally forward with our bow, we can fire our two front guns. No problem. Uh, earlier in this match, we actually procced my Halsey commander, which I love on my Des Moines. He is absolutely wonderful on it. You might have noticed that we activated Hitting Hard earlier by earning the Confederate achievement, and that just improves the rate of fire. <laughs> we basically have DD level reload with American heavy cruiser shell. <laughs> it's, it's a ton of damage in a short amount of time. And it, it's the reason why I love the ship so much, because... It's like an oversized DD from a gun gameplay standpoint. And it just, look at the damage output. Even when he's angled, we can just locate our shells at the super and easily penetrate him. And we earned Witherer at the very end as well. Just a real awesome game to be a part of. I was just jacked up after this. I was like, yes, we won that. Games like this, there's like 10 different stories. Uh, at the beginning, we were really, really contested around A. And we were dealing with that DD, spotting us and attacking us and giving that Kremlin a free shot on us. And I was really happy with how defensive I was positioned. And then we transitioned into hyper-aggressive, moving about the map and going at enemies that show too much side. And uh, the Des Moines punishes that very well. Uh, but it also punishes Bow Tank, too. You know, it pretty much punishes everything. And I love it. I love the Des Moines is such a beast. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.